Just today, Donald Trump signed executive orders pushing through the Keystone Pipeline and the Dakota Access Pipeline. They don't give a damn about this environment. They give a damn about the U.S. global position as the number one exploiter and oppressor of people and intensifying that, buffeting that up, and doing whatever is needed to do that. And that's what this, these steps they took today mean. But see, we have to see this regime for what it actually is. It isn't just the attacks on the environment. It isn't just targeting of Muslims with a registry. It isn't just the demonizing of immigrants, the promise of the border wall, and deporting three million immigrants. It isn't just what it means for black people. It isn't just what it means for women with a boastful sexual predator in the White House and a Christian fascist theocrat right next to him who thinks that women should not only lose the right to abortion, but they should lose access to birth control. It is all of that and more put on steroids, but even more than that, it is a fascist regime. It is a new form of rule, a form of rule that will crush and suffocate the room in society to stand up and fight these injustices. You're seeing that right now in the way they're going after the press, telling them what reality is. It's what Donald Trump says it is. And if you don't report that, you're going to be held accountable. They're threatening the press. That's pointing towards muzzling and silencing them. The same approach to civil liberties. The same approach to the right to dissent. This is what pulls together this fascist regime. And then we should add to it the fact that a fascist regime not only suppresses civil liberties, crushes the right to dissent, strangles a free press, but it also has its extra-legal means of going after it. That wall of meat that they talked about having at the inauguration. Now, I didn't see it much in operation, but just because it ain't acted out in real big ways yet, they are whipping it up, they are unleashing it, and that's going to be a real part of what we're going up against. And that is why we must act to stop this regime before it can fully consolidate its hands on the reins of power in this society because it will be far, 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 far harder to dislodge this regime in the future, down the road. Don't look at it like we got a two-year strategy, we got midterm elections, 2020, because people looked at Hitler that way. After him, us, is what they said, knock Hitler uns. That's German for after Hitler, us. And what they got instead was a regime and a ruler that crushed his opponents. First they came for the communist, and people didn't stand up because they weren't communists. Then they came for the trade unionists, then the Jews, and soon they had divided and conquered. So the question before us is, how do people here deal with an American Hitler? And the answer must not be by being good Americans to the American Hitler the way the good Germans were to the first Hitler. Sitting by, letting the horrors go down, and adapting to them as they went down. We must rise up. We must stand up. That's why RefuseFascism.org has called on millions and millions and millions of people, everybody who hates what Donald Trump represents, to flood the streets. These horrors that we have been up against all along that Trump is going to put on steroids, they were already there. They don't start with Donald Trump. And they stem from the very nature of this system. When he signs executive orders to push out the Keystone Pipeline, the Dakota Access Pipeline, showing no regard for the environment, that's actually unleashing this system and the way that it works, going after profit as a highest goal. And it's going to take revolution and nothing less to stop that once and for all. My name is Sansara Taylor. I'm a writer for Revolution newspaper. I'm a co-initiator of Refuse Fascism. And I'm also somebody who has been right here 
almost every year for the past several years on the anniversary of Roe versus Wade or on the day of the so-called March for Life. And I just want to make an announcement about this because Donald Trump yesterday signed the global gag rule, which is revoking funding from any agency around the world. Somebody spoke about this earlier, that even counsels a woman as to where they could find access to abortion, which essentially says to these agencies all over the world that if you allow women to have control over their reproduction or you even give them the knowledge of how they could exercise that, if you do that, you can't do any of the other funding that you do for, for people who have Ebola, for people who have other health care needs, who have other family planning needs, and it's, it's a form of blackmail, holding people's lives and, and health hostage to remove women's reproductive access and rights. And this is a very ominous thing, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. It's part of the Trump-Pence package is to defund Planned Parenthood here in the U.S., to close down abortion clinics, to nominate Supreme Court justices who will revoke Roe v. Wade. It is part of the fascist agenda. And I just want to let people know a couple of things about this. One, forcing women to have children against their will is a form of enslavement. Women are not incubators. Women are not objects. Women are not, are not possessions of men. They are not punching bags. They are not breeders. Women are full human beings. Abortion is not murder. Fetuses are not babies. And women are not incubators. But under a Trump-Pence fascist regime, if it is not stopped already, we're in a state of emergency across this country with five states with only one abortion clinic left in them. Huge numbers of women cannot access abortion at all. Huge numbers of women have already been forced to have children against their will and had their lives foreclosed and been trapped in abusive relationships, forced to drop out of school, forced into lives that they did not plan or want. And huge numbers of women have already been forced to risk their safety to self-induce abortions in regions in this country where they cannot get to a clinic. Even with that, Mike Pence, in his state, put a woman in jail for allegedly trying to self-induce an abortion, to criminalize women when it is the system that has revoked that right from them that is actually guilty of the crime. And this is a very, very dangerous, handmaid's tale, theocratic, woman-hating, patriarchal future put on steroids, and it's very dangerous. It's a cornerstone of the Trump-Pence fascist regime. And you have Trump, who's a woman-hater, boaster of sexual assault, the crudest kind of misogyny in that way, and you have Pence, who is a puritanical theocrat, and what they share is a whole fascist agenda but a fascist hatred of women in mirror opposite forms one treats women as sex objects and the other as breeders neither as full human beings so i just want to say while we're here before we step off this friday is the so-called march for life which is really a march for forced motherhood it's a march for female enslavement and kellyanne conway the campaign the head of Trump's campaign, and now one of his main advisors, is scheduled to speak at this rally. It's happening on Friday, and people should be back here. If you're from D.C., be back here at 1130 with members of Refuse Fascism, members of Stop Patriarchy, members of the Revolution Club, people standing up against this. Our message is abortion on demand and without apology. Women are not breeders, women are not incubators, and we say no to a fascist America. We need to rise up and stop this. Are you guys ready to march? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Love Trump! No KKK, no fascist USA! No Trump! No KKK, no fascist USA! No Trump! Over the weekend, the whole world changed. The whole world changed this weekend. And there's two sides to that. On the one hand, you had the inauguration of an American Hitler, Donald Trump, who is pulling together a fascist regime and is rapidly reordering society in a fascist way. Just today, just today, 
He announced the go-ahead on two pipelines, the Keystone and the Dakota Access Pipeline. These two pipelines will jeopardize the whole future of humanity. The drinking water in the places where they're built, the environment being further brought to the brink of catastrophe where human beings would no longer be able to live on the planet. Okay, yesterday he signed the Global Gag Order, which denies aid to any organization internationally which provides any kind of assistance in providing abortions to women. This is the most fundamental right of whether or not women will be breeders and cattle and brood animals or whether they will be few, full human beings able to control their own bodies and decide whether or not to have babies. This is not just a swing to the right. This is not just an asshole from Fifth Avenue getting into the White House. This is a fascist and a fascist regime that is being pulled together and every minute, every hour, this becomes accelerated and becomes more clear that this is a danger for all of humanity. And we are out here to say that in the name of humanity, in the name of the 7 billion people on the planet, in the name of the whole future of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. And the other side of what changed this weekend is that millions of people around the world, millions of people took to the streets. Come on, sister, with the fist out. Come on, get off that curb. Get off that curb and get back into the streets. Because that is what people need to do. I feel like I'm finally doing my duty as a soldier. 
to protect each and every single one of you. And that's all I'm out here. I'm out here for everybody. I'm not here for myself. I'm here for all of you to protect your life. Okay, so with, before we go to uh, Ilse, the next speaker, I just want to say, uh, people reminded me that tomorrow there's a hearing. I came out here a couple weeks ago to start building for this. We were, look, we came here. I just want to say, look, we came here. People with RefuseFascism.org. We came here to fight with every fucking thing we have, with all of our energy to actually prevent this fascist regime from coming into power. And we didn't do it. Okay? I just want to be real. We came here to prevent them from coming into power because we said, and it's still true, Humanity and the planet are actually what is at stake here. We talked about some of this. What is already being taken off the White House website? The LGBT resources, the civil rights, the climate change. Look, it's also not, it's no longer being translated into Spanish, okay? If people didn't listen to the inaugural speech, people should really listen to it and take seriously what Donald Trump is already doing. America first, America first. He is identifying throughout the speech, the real Americans are the people who supported him. Everybody else, they're our enemies, the criminals. We know who he's talking about, okay? This is illegitimate. This right here, illegitimate and fascist, that is why we have to drive them out. Not just because he's a bad dude and a lot of people don't like him, He's a misogynist, he's a pig, he is all of those things. We here, all of us know that. But he needs to be driven out. His whole regime needs to be driven out. They have no right to rule. A Muslim yes. registry? That is illegitimate. Banning abortion and, and not even allowing there to be resources for people to know where they can obtain this? That's illegitimate, okay? Building a wall, rounding up millions of immigrants, illegitimate. Stop and frisk the law of the land, fucking illegitimate. Yes. We have to stop them. We have to stop them. We cannot wait and see. We cannot wait for the midterms. We cannot wait and see with fascists. We all know what happened in Germany. And look, Donald Trump, this is not an exaggeration, is an American Hitler. And in fact, he is worse. He is worse. He is starting this fascist program. He has started it on day one. Okay? He has let us know every step of the way that he was deadly serious about this. And here we go we're on day four and all these fascistic executive orders. They have to be driven from power. They have to be driven from power. And it is up to us. How do we do that? It is up to us in our millions. In our millions. In our millions. People, if you don't know, look, a lot of people don't know about this. What just happened in South Korea with millions of people who poured into the streets. 11 weeks straight they did this. And they actually drove out their president, who was a corrupt president. Donald Trump is a fascist. He is far worse, okay? We have to be just as determined as them. They came out night after night, and mostly this took the form of candlelight vigils. It was peaceful. People were, but the fact that it was millions and night after night after night, they stopped business as usual just in their sheer numbers. That's what's needed here. It is possible. But we have to be on a mission to actually call forward those millions. We did some of that tonight. This is not going to cut it. Okay? It needs to go further. And I want to come back to what I started with. With book tomorrow, everybody here should be at the court. What is the courthouse? Superior it's, Court. Oh, Superior Court, right? Right. At 8.30 yeah, in the right. morning, a little early, whatever. Look, I was arrested for disrupting Jeff Sessions' motherfucking white supremacist, his hearing. Yeah. Okay, uh, what is it? A couple weeks ago. And, and, and my comrade right here, was, was a part of this as well. Michelle, who's still over here. Look, we got arrested. This is outrageous. 
for standing up for speaking out against an open white supremacist KKK sympathizer who's going to be the head of the so-called Justice Department. That is illegitimate. Yes, Go back to this one. That is completely illegitimate. We had every right to do what we did. People should stand up with us. People should support us. People should come to the courthouse, spread this on social media. Look, they are not planning on dropping these charges, but fuck them, they should. And they should know that there are people who are standing up, who are standing behind the people who stood up and did that. And there needs to be a lot more of that. These people in these positions of power need to actually start doing that. Look, I read today another horrific thing that's happening. The EPA, there is a ban on, on any of that actually being able to advance, any kind of environmental protection actually being able to advance in any form right now. This is illegitimate. This is dangerous. This has devastating implications, okay? Those people who join, who join the EPA for good reasons, they need to know that there's millions in the streets who have their backs. That is the only way that they are going to have the courage to step out, to risk their careers. Yes, but this is a fucking time to do that, okay? This is a time to, to make those sacrifices. They need to see us. We need to see them. There needs to be a relationship here, okay? But this needs to be what's happening. This needs to continue. Look, they are consolidating this fascist regime as we speak. It's not like we have a huge window here. We have to stop them. We have to stop them now. It is up to us, and we can. Even though this man is already in the White House, it does not mean that we have to stop fighting. Right now, it's, it's a small number of us. And the call that I want to make, if you, I know a lot of our group here, our family pretty much have refused fascism, are from different states, are from the Bay Area, from Chicago, from New York, from Philly. I want to make the call to everybody from Washington, D.C. I'm from here, from the DMV. I need you guys to sign up, make the pledge with us, because we need to keep refused fascism here in D.C. We're living like the Sarah Taylor says, this is the seat of power, so we cannot allow for refused fascism to stop. That's why I want to make this call. It's a call of emergency. If you, you know, if you live here, sign the pledge to get involved, you know, tell your friends, tell your family, your colleagues, we're going to be working, we're going to continue this, and we're always going to be on the streets, you know, we're going to, you got to tell everyone, if you have family in high school, in schools, we're going to continue this. We got to do these walkouts. We got to get people on the streets because that is the only way that we can stop this, you know? But if you're just sitting down in your home behind a screen, that's not going to do anything. So if you're from this area, if you're from Maryland, if you're from Virginia, if you're from Washington, I need you guys to come over here where the ladies are that have the paper. I, one of them is walking around. Put your name in there, your phone number, your email so we can get in touch, so we can meet up and plan this because we got to keep going, okay? So if you're from Washington, D.C., if you're from here, we have the power in our hands to continue this, to grow by numbers. The only way that we can stop a fascist regime, and I need you guys to put this in your head, is by having the millions, the thousands, the hundred thousands on the street. It's good that we're here, but we need more people. We need more people. You know, like they were saying, the women's march, it was beautiful, but that's all bullshit to me. That's all emotion. Emotion is not going to get a fascist man off the White House. What's going to get a, a fascist man, a group of these evil neo-Nazi neo men off the White House is by the power of the people, by the people being on the streets. So we need you guys to really get a grasp of this, of the emergency that we're living in this country, especially if we are living right next to the Capitol. We're living in the DMV. You have a moral responsibility to share this information with your friends, with your family, with your neighbors. If there's a school around you, I need you to get out there and tell them, walk out, get out of there. Come to the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Join Refuse Fascism. Yeah. Because that is the only way. We can't just have meetings. We can't just sing along. We gotta fight. 
We can just make beautiful banners that says love Trump's hate. Trump doesn't give a fuck about that. The next day, the day after, he tweeted, oh, I watch everyone out at the protest at the women's part. Oh, if only they all showed up on election night. In other words, he said, fuck everyone around the world that went out to the streets, because that doesn't mean nothing to me. Guys, this is dangerous, you know? So it's very urgent. And I'm gonna say it again, we have a moral responsibility. It's in our hands that we need to stop this. So again, if you're here in the area, I need you guys to tell your colleagues, send a mass email, join Refuse Fascism, get involved on Facebook. It's updated every Every hour I see that there's always updates on there about what's going on. This is an emergency. I had no idea I'd be here tonight because uh, I didn't know what was going on. I was walking home and I saw it and I was like, I'm a gay lady and I hate these guys. So, hey, um, why not see what the deal is? Uh, so that's how that ended up happening. But... I, I'm happy I found it because I'm tired of sitting around. I'm tired of um, sort of using this privilege I have and not like utilizing it to spread good messages. And uh, I come from a little town in Pennsylvania, which is actually one of the largest uh, points uh, where the KKK is still prominent. and. It's disgusting what I see, and it's disgusting what we grew up with, and how blind the people who still live back there are. But I got a little bit of hope, uh, which is great, because after this election I was feeling really hopeless. Uh, I got a little bit of hope because I went and I visited my little brother, he's, he's 11 years younger than me, uh, and we went out to see Finding Dory. And, uh, there was this little short that came before it that had a little sand bird. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but it's cute. And I kept saying, oh my God, he's so cute, he's so cute. And my little brother, 11 years old, taps me, I think, no, maybe 10 at the moment, but um, taps me on the shoulder and he says, Alyssa, you need to stop saying that. Uh, and I'm like, why, why Owen? And he goes, well, you don't know if that boy is a bird or uh, is a boy or a girl. You don't know if that bird's a boy or a girl. You should be using gender neutral uh, language. <laughs> Please use gender neutral language for that bird. You don't know. And I'm like, hell yeah, you're right. I don't know. Thanks. For, I was like, thank you for calling me out. That's and this little kid who's still stuck growing up in this really racist, horrible, homophobic place. Uh, 10 years old, taps me on the shoulder and says that, and I realized, yeah, no, there is still hope. Uh, even from grotesque towns like that, there is still hope coming out of there. But he's only 10 at the moment, and I've got to make sure that when he actually gets to an age where he can start making some changes, he has uh, a platform he can enter into. And with all the silencing going on, silencing to the people, to the media, to the, to the scientists, uh, I can't let that continue because his is a voice that will one day need to be heard. So, hey, I'm a new member. Yeah.